Welcome back all. Today, I want to ideally go and look for a new motorbike helmet. So after seeing Danny riding in Scotland with his intercom system on, listening to podcasts, listening to music, I found that I spent three solid days of riding being really, really jealous. So I want to go and see if I can find a motorbike helmet that is modern enough to incorporate maybe some Bluetooth speakers so I can have some entertainment while riding. But first of all, it's a big day for another reason. The Fiat, you may notice that we're in, the Fiat does still exist. It parks just opposite the Jeep and it's been looking incredibly sorry for itself. I don't know why this is, but for some reason, when you leave a car, the tires will deflate. <laughs> but when you're driving a car, the tires never deflate. That doesn't make any sense. Can you hear it? God, those Italian horses. <laughs> I can't believe it. All I did was unplug the battery, left it for 100 days, and it started first time. I mean, that is Italian engineering. And the reason I'm in the car, I wanted to see what was wrong with it. So I'm delighted to say for this video, I've partnered up with Carly, which is a dealer level quality OBD diagnostics port. This is what you get. Of course, there's something in there, which is the OBD reader plugged into the corner there. All I've done, taken off that panel, plugged in the OBD reader, turned on the car, and this will give me all of the fault codes. It will tell me exactly what is wrong with the Fiat after 230,000 miles. Do you want to push your seat back? That's better. You can, that's better. You can use the free app and it will give you the basic the basic level of diagnostics, but if you pay for the premium... <laughs> so what's that under your shoes? <laughs> Awful sound. Yeah, sorry, we haven't... We haven't cleared this out. Monica, what is this? <laughs> We've started... That's yours. Yeah, the, sorry, these are mine. That's embarrassing. We started <laughs> turning the Fiat into a storage bin. Actually, don't even film over there. <laughs> so, that's been plugged in. Diagnostics done. This. This is what it shows. I should say that you can have the basic one, the basic app that you hook up, that's free. That will give you basic diagnostics. If you pay premium annual subscription, it gives you all the bells and whistles. So here it is, Fiat 500, 2009. And you can see it's got a nice little display showing you everything. This is what I love. Press on features here. Diagnostics. Press continue. And here we have it. Three issues found. This is so smart. Oh, just can... three. I know. That's not much. I was surprised by that. Mm. It's incredible, isn't it? So three sets of issues. One of them is the ABS stabilization brake issue. Press on that one issue it has, and then you can read the system and it will go into more detail. But if you press here, this is really clever. They've got a full guide of, of mechanics, how-to, step-by-step instructions. Press this button and it will take you through to the error code with videos on how mm. to fix that issue. Mm -hmm. That's extremely useful. But if we just go back here, you can see body control module. There are three issues there, electronic power steering. Slightly worryingly, there's an issue there. That's a few more issues than I thought. I'll show you one other thing. It's limitless, but this as one other thing. You can see all of the live data going on with the car here. So everything's populating everything in real time. So you can get an exact idea on the health of the car. What that means, if you are a competent mechanic, unlike myself, you can do the step-by-step -step instructions and learn exactly how to fix your car. And if you're not a competent mechanic like myself, you can go to a garage, but at the very least, you can know exactly what the issue is. And you can save often 60 pounds on the diagnostic setup because you've already done it yourself and you can know exactly what's wrong with the car. So if you are interested, you can click on a link in the written description or in the pinned comment and you will get 15% off your Carly purchase. One more thing, isn't it amazing? It still sounds, I mean, maybe perfect's too far, but this is, how good is this car? It's brilliant. It's done 230,000 miles. It's been left for 100 days mm -hmm. and it still starts up first time. You know, there is something to be said for 
for just good, simple, honest engineering. I think this engine's been in production since the 1980s. It's, it's so good. We can't sell it, can we? But you want to sell it. Yes, I was talking yesterday about selling this car. <laughs> yes. And then, I, then I've just seen it again and I remember how much I love it. Yeah. Maybe we should get it fixed by a mechanic. Absolutely. Okay. Excuse this. Javelin sticking out the front. That's just my Insta360 setup. So I think what I'll do first is head over to the bike shed. For one, I haven't been there incredibly since the end of May. I don't think, to the best of my knowledge, I've been once all summer. They often have a nice selection of helmets, so I'll go and check that out. Plus, great thing about the bike shed, even if I don't find what I'm looking for, they've always got good food, great coffee, and a nice selection of bikes and gear in general that I can just have a look at. So it is never a wasted journey heading over to the bike shed. I have genuinely, over the past couple of weeks, I've, I've been assessing and thinking about potential helmet options. I mean, we are in 2024 now. Should I be considering maybe one of those earplugs with a built-in microphone so I can listen to stuff? Should I be considering a helmet where you can have the built-in speakers? Does everyone use these now? Am I just about six years behind the time? So I want to go and have a look, see what kind of setups there are. Because I am curious, anything that enhances riding, makes riding more enjoyable. Is it nice on an open country road, for example, to, to listen to music, to listen to a podcast? Honestly, I don't know because I've never done it. So I'll go and see what kind of stuff they've got. Bike Shed, they always have some of the coolest stuff available. So it'll be fun at least window shopping. It's good to be back and that is that's one of the ultimate city bikes it's very rare that i've ridden a bike as good as that in the city i think there must be a, a group of people from the bike shed about to head off on an african expedition i'll flip the camera show you what's in here and then i'll go inside speed 400 parked up and then this is where the what looks like the expedition bikes are lined up. So this one possibly, that's got a GS trophy stick on the front. I'm not sure if that's part of the expedition. You can hear the trains going above me. Suzuki in the corner and then a BMW on the side. Actually, I've just noticed this has it on here, on this R9T, Morocco 1500. Wow, and so does that Suzuki, so clearly something 
is about to happen with a massive African road trip. So the bikes of choice, of course, BMW R1250 GS. I love this, it's so characterful. You can hear the underground trains going over these arches here. That's why they've got these arches to accommodate the trains. With a, a Yamaha there, another Tenere there, and Honda. Is that the 350, I think? God, such a range of different bikes. Everything from the heavyweight BMWs to the lightweight CRF rallies. Triumph Street Scrambler, custom one there. Looks like another one that could be ready for that African trip with a beautiful Triumph Thruxton 900, Kawasaki and a Vespa with, I'll quickly show you these two parked up here, two proper, proper, proper desert races again. They've got those Morocco stickers on. If I can find anything out inside, I'll let you know what is imminently about to happen. Before I start helmet shopping, I'll show you a few of the bikes and everything on display. So this is definitely new since I've last been here. Yamaha AG200, healthcare delivery motorcycle for programs across Africa. So there's definitely an African theme going on at the bike shed at the moment. This is brilliant. Look at that. Big little noise, heavily customized on the Scrambler. Custom Suzuki GS1371. God, look at the work that's been done on the engine there. GSXR, so that's Clearly what it started life as, I love this. This is Royal Enfield Tracker. They customize so well, these Royal Enfields, and that's had an extension all the way from the tank to the rear bodywork. So it's all a one-piece thing, and, and it's filthy. So it's clearly done a lot of proper stuff. In fact, I think I've seen this online somewhere. That is Hawkeye Hooligan. Wow, what a job. Based on an interceptor, of course, and then at the back, a proper classic. Lovely looking matchless there. To see some of those on the road, very rare. So that is definitely the next best thing. Then you can see people outside there in, or along the eating area with the bikes going past. Come through to, I'll go through this arch to the main bit. See the hairdressing section there, there's just so much to do. Bit of TV showing this year's bike shed show, I think. And then they've always got this, the Paul Smart, Paul Smart Ducati eating area over here. Love that. Trans scrambler and all of the gear, which is what I'm curious about today. So I'm going to see what selection of helmets they've got. Custom bike shed interceptor. I remember that one from last time. So head and helmets. Sherry helmets, these. These I quite like the look of. And a few bell ones. Selection bell staff jackets. This one I've got that, it's just a timeless jacket. I love that. Wouldn't mind another jacket as well. I think they've got such a good, properly curated selection here. Everything looks on point. The great selection of jeans as well. And then over here, you've got all of the bike shed, all of their own brand gear, lifestyle gear, t-shirts, sweatshirts, boots, ladies boots, in fact. So they've got a decent ladies selection as well. Check out over there. These are one of the ultimate ones. 
one of these off-road, what would that be, 1970s Husk Varnas. That's about one of the coolest looking off-road bikes, full stop. I love those. Around here, little bit of luggage and stuff like that. And a few more bits and pieces of the bike shed gear. So they've got helmets I like, the Head & Helmets, which is a British brand, and also Sherry Helmets. But I know all of those, I know I like them, and I really need to go to a place which sells maybe 50 to 100 different helmet models, different intercom systems, just to, to see if I can compare ones side by side and see which I like the most before making my decisions, because the prices range massively from about 150 pounds all the way up to about 800 pounds and because it's been so long since I've done any kind of helmet shopping I I need to pretty much re-educate myself on the entire market and what's out there. I found out what all of these bikes are doing here with the Morocco 1500 badges on. So once a year Bike Shed do a huge Moroccan adventure starting in Marrakesh and ending in Fez. 1,500 kilometers, but the difference to usual rallies is, for one, you can use your own bike, and secondly, you can choose to do the off-road sections or the on-road sections, and that's why you've got such a hugely eclectic mix of bikes. That makes sense. I'm gonna flip the camera now and explain a bit more. Huge difference makes sense. So when you look at these two proper, hardcore, stripped back off-roading bikes. They will definitely, definitely be doing the off-roading section. Then you've got something like the Yamaha Tenere. I guess that could potentially be doing either the on-road or off-roading sections. That Honda's got to be going through the desert. But can you believe it? In two weeks time, these motorbikes will all, I'm guessing they'll be shipped over to Morocco to start the rally. Who knows, maybe some are actually riding there as well, but then you've got likes of the big ones, the two huge BMW GSs. 100% they won't be going through sand dunes, so they'll be doing the on-road section. And that's why this now makes sense. BMW R9T, Morocco 1500, that of course, all on-road. But it's incredible to think this BMW, look at that, that is going to be in Morocco in just a couple of weeks time. Oh, seeing all of these bikes getting ready for a trip of a lifetime over to Morocco. 
I can't lie, I'm a little bit jealous. I'm now thinking, shall I just pack up the Bonneville in a month or so's time and do some gigantic African adventure? Oh, look at them all. Oh, I'm so envious. So easy to spend a thousand pounds in these incredible biking spots. I went in for a helmet or to look at helmets and I spent most of the time trying on trousers. If you're feeling flush for cash, honestly, check out some of the Bell Stuff stuff because they've got these new, and I filmed this, beige sand colored biking trousers. They are, they're really, really tempting. They're 320 pounds. They fit beautifully in fact you have to size up one but if you're looking for for some classy looking sand trousers check those out because that kind of thing is really really hard to find and they're so stealth you can't even tell if they're biking trousers they don't have any pockets or anything on the side they just look like normal good looking trousers but i have to remember i went in there looking for helmets so first things first i have to stay on the hunt at least to try out a helmet with an intercom system. So, no purchases today, I'm quite proud of myself. I'll, I'll wrap it up there. I'll wrap it up there with a little bit, I think I'll spend the rest of the day daydreaming about a gigantic trip. Something about Africa and the open road that's, that's calling me back. I think I'll be having dreams tonight about those bikes parked up under the arches in Bike Shed, knowing the adventure they're about to go on.